guy that gets the ball from the scrum. Yeah. So after your guy gets thrown up in the air. Why does the guy get thrown in the air? That's your guy. Well, because just because he's your guy. Well, because he's not tall enough, so they have to make a. a they got to like help, a, like a Mega Man. They can't they, unless you hire someone like Draymond Green, a tr- transformer. Yeah, Draymond Green would be good for that. Well, we're, we're we're trying to get Caleb back. He likes to fight. You put Caleb <laughs> on the rugby squad. Yeah, I want to see somebody lift Caleb up. See, that's what I got to do. I can use my <laughs> eligibility for rugby. Yeah. All right. All right. So CB <laughs> is back. Get your CB. CB is back. Caleb, you're back. What's up? What's going on? All right. So um, let's talk Draymond. Yeah, like I said, I think the guy who, the guy who released that, because okay, so from my understanding, it came from the video. It wasn't open practice. It wasn't media. It came from, and um, it came from uh, the video department because it was a recorded video. It wasn't like a live video taken. It was a recording of the practice film. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, whoever released that should be punished like greatly. Like I know, I know. The players didn't release it because Draymond doesn't want to look bad. You know, Jordan right. Poole's not going to release it because it was bad in it. The media did like report about it, but they didn't have video because they're not allowed to video practice. So I, I don't know who, you know, kind of how that whole thing went down, but that person should be punished. I agree with you if whoever released it wasn't authorized to release it. You know what I mean? Like if, if the team allowed him to release it, I mean, he can't be held accountable. And I don't it, think it's good. The team, now they're in a predicament. Correct. Right. It was built have held it in house. Right. No, they're, they're definitely in a predicament. But I can't imagine that anybody that, that runs their social media, you know, would, would release something like that without permission. I mean, I, I'm just assuming, and you know what that means. They got paid by TMZ. Well, if, if they got paid by, by TMZ, um, then, yeah, I would imagine the team is going to fire him, at least. I hope so. <laughs> and, and going back to what my 10-year-old producer who replaced Steve said earlier today, uh, media with no video is just radio. So <laughs> had they taken away all the cameras inside the uh, uh, gymnasium, we would never see this footage. We would just have people like Randy talking about what happened. I, I would be curious, though, how this plays out. You know, Because, like I said, whoever runs that team's social media – you know, has supervisors, has, you know, vice president of communications, has whatever, whatever. So I would imagine and whatever that that they're going to be fired if it wasn't authorized by the team. So, yeah. And, and I agree yeah, with man, you. If, if you work for the team, you know, you're around players all the time. You know, you've now mm-hmm. severed, you know, ties with and relationships with everybody on the team. How are you going? To, I, you know what? I'm going to take it back. I hope he doesn't get fired. You know why? Why? Because his life is going to be a living hell going to work every day. Yeah. Can you imagine walking yeah. around, you know, the office, the compound, you know, whatever you would call, you know, when you go to work, you guys, you know, now you see Draymond walking down to, you know, to, to practice or what are you going to do? Run the other way? You're going to have to. <laughs> no one's going to want, no one's going to, nobody's going to watch you around. I think it's uh, there's, <laughs> no, there's a certain level of them break, man. Like it's uh, there's that four wall thing. This is just as bad as the Antonio Brown thing when he was, you know, recording Facebook Live in a speech after practice, like after the game. Sorry, after they won right. that playoff game. There's so, just certain things that you keep out in your head with house. Well, it, it, it matches video of every fight ever that took place in the facility or sports team went viral. Like it would be, it would be crazy. No, no, now the, for sure. Now, the real question is, like, compared to the greatest punch of all time, the Kermit Washington, Rudy Teknakovich, uh, you know, the punch, how would you rate uh, Draymond's technique in that video? I mean, it, it, it was a stiff one. It was, <laughs> uh, it was stiff one, man. He knocked him out. Yeah, it, was, it was a stiff one. Like, that's, that's not fun, you know. Now, me personally, we'd have to fight again. <laughs> I thought, hold on a second hold on a second i thought you said that you let it go after it happens yeah but that's when we're both involved in the skirmish but that was he you know that straight jab you're gonna knock me out one more time so i can get my shot i want to get the lick in too so do you think <laughs> do you think they'll both be able to 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 get over it and move on i would hope so man i would hope so i think like i said like i've been in those situations like personally, and we are able to get past it. 
because it was never, and again, like, I think it was just impossible to get a lot of people on with the, with the egos. You got alpha male or something. As long as nobody's saying things that you can't take back, if it's just, oh, you know, just kind of huffing and puffing and it kind of leads to, well, you took it too far and I got you, I got to show you that I'm going to fight you kind of thing. If that's the case, then I think that they can get over it. But if it's a situation where, you know, he's talking about his girlfriend or his wife or one of those things you can't get past, then that'll be unfortunate. But hopefully it's not they can, you know, they can move on. Because, you know, I think they have a great chance to repeat the champion and take all kind of stupid pictures. But you know, like you're saying, you got guys making millions of dollars and a lot of the egos. So we'll see what happens. So, so Caleb, I, you know, I sleep with the TV on. I uh, I get most of my sports news and analytical through uh, osmosis of listening to ESPN as I start to wake up in the morning. Um, and and I feel like you're such a liar. I feel like last night. I feel like I I saw a loop or a story of Aaron Donald who was out of the game, not dressed. But then he put on a helmet and then charged the field to start a fight after the game was over. Is that did that happen this week or was that an old footage or? And what are your thoughts on something like that where, you know, a guy puts on a helmet to go into a battle or fight after a dirty play? That that didn't happen. I think it was a practice. It was during the it was during training camp, and then um, they had that whole issue of practice with the Bengals, and he grabbed two dudes' helmets and he was swinging helmets to people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's that a, was a like, he's a, what, six, yeah, five, 300 pound dude the, the only good yeah. thing that came out of that whole situation uh, Caleb you know what it is right that phenomenal picture the best part to come out of it is is Alex was a safe distance away <laughs> yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. but, but 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 why, 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 why do you why do you guys? Why do you football players fight with your helmets on? Like, why? Why, why don't you guys take them off like the NASCAR guys? Um, because that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you, if like, well, I don't know why you would fight with your helmet off. Put it on, right? But open, put the helmet on, and then open hand punches. Because you don't want to punch a closed helmet. A punch a helmet with a closed, you're going to break your hand. So open hand punches, right? And then, and then put your and keep your helmet on. And in those situations. You know, guys get over pretty quickly. It's not, it's, it kind of just stings your pride more than it hurts your face. It's easy to get over. <laughs> what, one of my closest friends was uh, on the field, played for the Bucks, and and did take a swing at a player uh, while the Sean Taylor was still wearing the helmet. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was it was pretty bad. Um, yeah, I learned that early on. Don't know uh, if you know much about that story, but Sean Taylor spit on Michael Pittman. And Pitt was, oh, well, no. he just lost it. So they they threw Sean Taylor out of the game, and then they were ejecting Pitt. And, you know, the the refs got together, and they're like, you know, he did just get spit on. They're like, okay, well, let him stay in the game. Like, Is that the most disrespectful thing you can do? Like getting spit easily. on? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, if you spit, spit on a dude, man, like you deserve whatever comes back. If you hit him with the helmet, whatever it is, like that is, that is insane. Like spitting on somebody is a crazy thing. Like you can't. I would never, there's no situation, man, woman, football, not football, that I'm going to fix my lips to spit on a human being. Like, that's that's so out of line. No, no way. I, I agree with you. Give me your thoughts on the season so far. Or, or we'll, we'll start at the top. Are the Philadelphia Eagles for real? Um, I think they're for real. I think they're the best team in football. No, I think the Kansas Chiefs are the best team in football. I think the Buffalo Bills will be second. And then I will put the Eagles at third. But I think they are They have a really good defense. Um, they get to the quarterback. Um, Jalen Hurst is playing really, really well. And as long as you can keep that up, um, I think they'll do well. I think uh, I think I'm gonna I'm interested to see if the Cowboys move away from this move away from the style that they've been playing this game at because they've been running the ball and relying on defense and asking the quarterback to do very little. That's what they were doing when they were winning 12, 11, 10 games early in Dak's career. The last few years, he's always getting a lot of money. They're throwing the ball 40 times a game, 35 times a game, and they're struggling. So I'm interested to see if he can put his ego to the side and keep that kind of game plan, that game style, and make the throws when he needs to make them to try and keep winning games that way because their defense is lights out. But you've got to move, stay ahead of the chain, keep the, uh, keep the ball moving, keep the ball from the other guys, and, um, and play smart football. So I'm interested to see kind of how they make that transition. Um, the Rams, I'm kind of surprised how bad they're doing. 
Um, I actually had like I think I had like a Rams Chiefs Super Bowl. I think that's what I picked when we first started the season off. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised with their struggles. The offensive line has looked pretty pretty abysmal this year so far. And um, but all in all, it's, it's been it's been the football's been rocky the first couple weeks. It was you know people were I think the whole preseason thing kind of comes back to bite you. People weren't playing as well, you know, early on or smooth. But it's the NFL, man. They've been fun games. They've all been close. Um, it's been exciting to watch. I'll give you my Super Bowl prediction mid to late January. Okay, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm sticking with the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are going to go and they're going to win it all. Um, that's what I'm sticking with. But the other team they're going to play, I'll let that evolve as well. But I want to give a shout-out to my UCLA Bruins. We are 5-0 and for the first time. In a very, very long time, we are ranked number 11 for the first time since I was at school. Um, we just beat the number 15 team and the number 11 team in back-to-back weeks. So, Kelly Rowan, I want, I called for his job earlier. I was saying about how they've been playing for the last four years when he was there. But those guys are, are, doing, are doing really, really good right now. So, shout out to the Burns. Since you brought up college, I, I wanted to ask you this. Give me your thoughts on how they have now flip-flopped the number one team, what, three or four weeks in a row? Um, I don't know why. I think Georgia is the unquestioned number one team in the country right now. I think they have the most talent. Um, Alabama, I didn't think should be number one after they had those, that close game against Texas and the next one. But um, even college football had a lot of parity. It always does, but A&M has struggled more than I thought they would. Texas struggled after playing a great game against Alabama. Um, I, I like it though. I like it. It keeps it, it keeps it interesting. Um, I like the fact that they expanded the playoffs, so that's going to be fun to watch. Sure. Um, I, I, that doesn't start for the next. I think in another year or two, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. It, but, I... but you know, like I, I love I love the fact that USC and UCLA are kind of hitting their stride before they hit the Big Ten in a year or two. Um, Oklahoma, my goodness, my cousin plays there, and they have just looked atrocious. And I didn't see that coming at all. Um, this whole, you know, like the way it's kind of going now with these schools and with the transfer portal, they're not sticking next to bad football and bad coaches and bad players because players will transfer out of your school. You know, Oklahoma lost a lot of guys when their coach left. And so I think they're probably going to move off their coach at the end of the season. Um, Nebraska moved off their coach um, in the middle of the year. So it's, it's really interesting when the changes in the offseason and the changes to the sport kind of affect how these things go. Because now in the NFL, you see the trend where, you know, coaches get fired after a year or two if you don't perform. Some coaches only get a year or maybe have a rule. I don't know how long he had, but it was pretty quick. Um, I think so he was there. I think, I think uh, he was there three years. Three? It didn't seem like it. Okay. So, but like, you know, coaches, the turnover of coaches are so fast now. You're seeing that with players too. If they drop the quarter, they're talking about moving off Kenny Pickett. And it's been, he's had four starts. You know, and the Steelers talking about doing to draft another quarterback in the first round next year if they losing the way they're losing. So just that the wind down mentality is getting it's getting crazy, but it makes for interesting football. It makes for interesting watches, and so I've been kind of keeping my eye on some of those things. The Steelers, how Kenny Pickett does because their season is looking like it's not going to do well. You know, this Oklahoma, you know, fire their coach and move on to a black guy like Matt Rule or Urban Meyer. Well, you know, things like that with some of those guys floating out there. So. Football's been awesome, man. It's been real interesting. Saturdays and Sundays have been a lot of fun for me. What NFL team do you anticipate making some kind of move? You know, that's that's been struggling. That you know hasn't been in the the upper echelon. You know, Philadelphia, Buffalo, Kansas City, but that you think could make that push. Maybe not, you know, to the Super Bowl, but but could get in the playoffs and and have a nice run. I mean, Philly, Philly struggled for a while. Um, I think since their Super Bowl run. And Carson Wentz, like they haven't really looked great, so I think that they'll make a good push. I don't know if they're quite Super Bowl ready yet. Um, I think that um, the quarterback needs a little bit more time under his belt, so before he needs to just kind of prove it more. So I don't think that they're there yet. But um, the Dolphins, if they can get Tua back, will be a real problem. Um, I think they're having like a real quarterback issue now. The starter went out, the backup went out, and so now they're down to their third string guy, and um, so it's tough for them. But if they can get him back healthy. I think they make a push, but um, right now, man, it's. I think the Ravens, you know, they've always kind of been around and did well. Um, I think the league is kind of top heavy. Doesn't mean the games won't be close, but you can kind of see a real separation between the teams who are at the top 
and the ones who are kind of, you know, some teams are a quarterback away or, you know, still trying to figure out the whole coaching quarterback dynamic thing. But um, I think at the top, you got you got some really good football teams. I think the picks will surprise people. I think they're going to string together some wins, especially now with the Dolphins being in the situation that they're in. I think the Patriots get some wins and they find a way to get to the playoffs and surprise people. But um, I think those top teams are kind of kind of, going to kind of sweep through this thing this year. Buffalo, right, Kansas City. So, so earlier, in the- earlier, we, earlier we talked about you know how sacred ground. Just interrupt your best friend while he's no, talking. No, no, but, it's but, okay. but the, he talked about how <laughs> sacred the ground is, the gridiron, <laughs> where they where they play this emotional game for hours and how the fans run on the field and it's a sacred ground. So, so what's your take on the most sacred of all ground? The Dallas Star uh, in Dallas. Now that they have a quarterback controversy, Dak Prescott out, but now they're putting together wins. Uh, is that for real? Is are Dallas a contender this year? Um, Dallas is a contender. They have a superstar defense. Um, their defense is playing amazing. Michael Parsons is a super super stud. D line's going great, so they they're a real contender. I'm not. I don't. I don't want to call them a Super Bowl contender yet. You know, but I think they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs, wherever they play. Um, I'm. I just. There's just for the last however many years, they, when they get to that playoff game, they can't find the consistency in their identity. So I think they need to stick to Tony Pollard, stick to Ezekiel Elliott, let them run the ball, take some pressure off of that offensive line who's young. They have a lot of young guys in there. Um, wait for Tyron Smith to get back before you start airing out some more. Let Michael Gallup get more healthy. You know, take the pressure off Dak with the defense win games, run the football, old school football. And I think if they can do that and not try to be the best offense in the league and score 40 points a game, I think they can really make a good run. And I think I think that division, the New York Giants, Brian Babel, you talked about teams that have been bad for a long time. Um, he's doing an amazing job with those guys. Like, I mean, that's when you talk about, like, you know, there's always this thing that people say that it's not about the X's and O's, it's about the, you know, Jackson, the Joes, or whatever it is. But then you get a quarterback, you get a, sorry, you get a coach like Brian Gable with a team that's been winning two, three games a year for the last few years. And you see now they're five and one. They just had a big win against the Packers. So, you know, they're a team that I think is a dark horse competitor. Um, I don't think Daniel Jones can win the Super Bowl just right now, but I think they got a really good coach and um, a good GM moving forward. So they'll be a fun team to watch as the year progresses. What do you think is better for a sport, you know, and, and it doesn't matter which one, you know, baseball, you know, Yankees, Dodgers, uh, football, Kansas City, uh, you know, New England. Is it better to have those elites always be elites or is it, in your opinion, better to have a team every once in a while get in there, whether it was Philadelphia that one year or, or whoever, you know, and, and beat the dominant names and teams? I like I like the elites being the elites. Um, obviously, every once in a while, it's going to be nice to have like a a team come out of nowhere and get a championship. I think the NFL is a little different because it's um, there's just way more parity. It's a professional, you know, it's, it's a little different, right? But like when the Lakers and the Boston Celtics play in championship games, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a moment, right? When the University of Texas and USC face off and they're both ranked, it's a moment, you know. Like those those things drive people. 